Hey, it's Matt. I've got a bit of a departure this time around. Uh, instead of the usual highly detailed uh, watercolors of birds or insects, I thought I'd do something uh, kind of silly. I, I like doing a lot of these caricatures when I'm just uh, sitting around waiting for the kids and if I don't have a regular sketch to work on. Um, and so I, I took a bunch of these little doodles that I did and, and tried to compile them into one scene and uh, so it had a couple of these different characters and I figured having a couple of these um, guys interacting would be more interesting than just a one-off. You can kind of figure out what was going on between the images. I wasn't entirely happy with the right-hand side fish's eyes so I ended up going into Lightwave and creating a little 3D model where I could move the eyelids and move the eyes around and open and close the mouth and so I kind of posed it in the way I liked and had the eyes the way I liked and eventually I once I lit it kind of in the the way I wanted I then rendered out that 3D image and composited it on top of my sketch once that was composited, I could uh, I could see that okay, the eyes look right, everything's um, just about right. So I kept the original body and then just used the eyes and the upper lip from this guy for the finished painting. And so I took this sketch and created the outlines that I was going to paint from, transferred that to the watercolor paper, and frisked it off the main objects. I pre-wet the paper so I'd have a really smooth background and then um, proceeded to do a wash going from pink to tan to uh, some, some different blues. And once that background wash was done in, I uh, ended up sprinkling in with a toothbrush, spattering in some sandy textures, and then with uh, a brush flicked on some blue spatters to kind of give an idea of uh, bubbles and streaks in the water to create a little bit more action than if I just had this plain blue background. After that I put in a couple of the drop shadows of the crab and some rocks in the background and hit that with the hair dryer. Peeled off the frisket to reveal the white of the paper and then I transferred on the original sketch. And here I was pretty straightforward just blocking in the lightest local colors. kind of fun with these that you know usually with the birds and especially with the medical scientific work that I usually do there's there is a specific color things need to be and to have it look right and with doing these caricatures anything goes so you can make all sorts of crazy colors and you can just do whatever you want and have fun with it and that's that's really a pleasant change it's only whatever's right is what you Whatever, the way you want it to look is right. It doesn't have to look realistic. Not much of this is realistic. Um, that being said, I try to have consistent lighting and, uh, you know, kind of build the shapes realistically, even though the fish themselves and are really pretty ridiculously fake. Uh, they kind of have to have an internal logic to make sense out of them. And so, you know, the lighting is, is, is fairly, uh, you know, upper right-hand lighting and fairly straightforward in that way. And there are some liberties I take. If you really look at underwater scenes, fish don't have specular highlights, little glossy highlights on their eyes and on their, their scales. They're, they're, they're matte because they don't have that interference of the shiny um, wet stuff with the air. That's what gives you that specular highlight. And so with these, if you do it without it, they kind of look flat and boring. So I usually lie to myself and say, it's okay, I can put in those specular highlights and make them look really shiny. Because um, when you pull them out of the water, that's what they look like. So it's kind of, uh, it's fake, but logical, if that's fair. So most of the painting was done with a number two brush, a really sharp 
number two so I can get a fair amount of fine detail. There's some little things like, you know, in the crab's legs that I ended up pulling in the little, you know, tiny detail brushes, um, like the 10 aughts and things like that, but most of it was the number two. And painting the little bubbles on these is always fun because you can bring in some of the colors of the other fish. And I did the same thing with the, the shell of the crab. Um, years ago when I was in the uh, Everglades, you'd see these tree snails in the mahogany hammocks. And the tree snails would have these beautiful stripy patterns. And uh, I always loved those, they're so pretty. And uh, so when I was painting this hermit crab cartoon caricature, I wanted it to have kind of that stripy shell, which is totally not realistic for this. And I also put some spikes on it, which wasn't realistic for a tree snail. But anyhow, it was fun to paint and uh, kind of have those crazy colors on it. And in doing that, I also tried to have some of the reflected color of the green fish on the uh, on the uh, whirls of the that the, the shell. And if you look toward the right later on, I'll put in some of those a little bit of the yellow of the yellow fish reflected in it. So it looks like it has. Uh, um, some of the reflections of its environment, which made it look a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say realistic, but uh, a little more convincing. How about that? The little scallop that I was painting now, that was surprisingly it wasn't difficult, but I kind of waited till late in the painting to do it, so it uh, was kind of like a help it don't mess it up. And uh, in the end, I thought, it was it about the right level of detail? So there it is. That's the finished painting of these uh, fish caricatures. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of departure from the usual uh, birds and uh, insects and things like that. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog and the website. <laughs>